There is a plant that most gardeners have been told to kill for years. We spray it with chemicals. We tear it from the soil. We curse it for daring to grow in our driveways. Yet for thousands of years, this same plant healed the liver, cleansed the blood, and fed civilizations through famine. It survives fire. It survives drought. It survives frost. And buried in its roots is a compound that modern scientists are now studying for its ability to make cancer cells commit suicide. It is not a weed. It is one of humanity's oldest medicines. This is the story of a plant superfood that we turned into an enemy. Welcome to Nature Lost Vault. If this vault opens something for you and you find value in these stories, hit subscribe and the bell icon. Every like and every share helps preserve this forgotten wisdom together. The archive opens not in a garden, but in a desert library sealed for centuries. Dunhuang, China. Along the ancient Silk Road, explorers discovered a hidden cave filled with manuscripts untouched for a thousand years. Among them were medical texts from the Tang Dynasty, describing a yellow flower called Pu Gong Ying. Physicians wrote that it cooled inflamed organs, purified the blood, and healed infections that once claimed lives. They were documenting a plant already known across continents long before ink touched parchment. In Egypt, healers brewed its roots to calm fevers. In Greece, it was prescribed for liver congestion. Arab medical scholars called it tarakshak, the bitter herb that opens blocked pathways inside the body. When the pilgrims sailed to the New World on the Mayflower, they didn't just bring tools and Bibles. They brought sacks of dandelion seeds. To them, it wasn't a weed. It was a pharmacy they couldn't leave behind. Every culture that touched this plant arrived at the same truth. The dandelion is a biochemical arsenal. Its roots contain inulin, a prebiotic that feeds beneficial gut bacteria. Its leaves are a nutritional fortress. Modern analysis shows that dandelion greens contain more vitamin A than spinach, more vitamin C than tomatoes, and more iron than kale. They are packed with vitamin K, essential for bone health and blood clotting. To the ancients, this was not just salad. It was survival. Roman soldiers ate the greens to prevent scurvy on long campaigns. Medieval herbalists used the sap to treat warts and infections. Indigenous tribes in North America boiled the greens to restore vitality after the long, starving months of winter. So how did a plant this vital become the most hated weed in the world? It wasn't an accident. It was a business plan. The erasure began in the 20th century. In the post-war boom of the 1940s, a new cultural ideal appeared. The perfect lawn, a smooth, uniform carpet of green grass, a symbol of order and control. But maintaining a monoculture against nature is impossible without weapons. Chemical companies needed a product to sell to the suburban homeowner. They found it in a chemical called 2,4-D. This compound was originally researched during World War II as a potential biological weapon to destroy enemy crops. After the war, it was repurposed as a miracle weed killer. It had a unique property. It killed broadleaf plants such as dandelions, but left the grass alive. To sell the chemical, they needed a villain. They chose the bright yellow flower. Magazines mocked homeowners who allowed dandelions to appear. Neighbors shamed neighbors. A plant that had fed generations became a symbol of failure, laziness, and poverty. The erasure was complete in less than 50 years. We traded a free pharmacy for a green carpet. Yet the dandelion refuses to disappear. While cultivated crops demand irrigation, fertilizer, and coddling, the dandelion lives where nothing else can. Its deep taproot acts like a drill. It punches through compacted dead earth, reaching down feet into the subsoil to mine calcium and potassium.
It pumps these minerals to the surface, healing the soil for other plants. It feeds pollinators in early spring when the rest of the world is grey. It returns after fire. It rises through concrete. And now, modern science is finally catching up to the weed. At the University of Windsor in Canada, biochemist Dr. Siaram Pandey made a startling discovery. His team found that dandelion root extract could induce apoptosis in certain aggressive cancer cells. Apoptosis means programmed cell suicide. In laboratory tests, the extract signaled leukemia and melanoma cells to disintegrate, while leaving healthy cells untouched. It did not poison the body like chemotherapy. It simply reminded the cancer cells how to die. The plant was not weak. Our memory was. But its redemption goes even further. It might just drive the future of the global economy. During World War II, when rubber supplies from Asia were cut off, the Soviet Union turned to a relative of the common dandelion. The Russian dandelion is Taraxacum cock sagis. Its roots contain high-quality natural latex. Today, the global supply of rubber trees is threatened by disease and climate change. Companies like Continental Tire and Ford are now growing thousands of acres of these dandelions. They are producing the first sustainable, high-performance tires made entirely from a weed. The plant we tried to poison may soon be the wheels of our civilization. To reclaim this plant, we have to relearn what our ancestors understood. The dandelion is not decorative, and it is not disposable. It is a full pantry hiding in a single herb. The young leaves, harvested in early spring before the flower blooms, are mild and tender. They are a detoxifying bitter green that wakes up the liver. The blossoms are edible and sweet. They can be battered and fried into fritters, or steeped into a golden syrup that tastes like honey. The roots, dug in the fall when they are thick with stored energy, can be scrubbed, dried, and roasted. Ground up, they brew into a rich, dark, caffeine-free coffee substitute that supports the liver instead of stressing the adrenals. Every part of the dandelion carries purpose. Every part carries power. The dandelion never needed our approval. It needed our memory. For thousands of years, it fed, healed, and sustained communities. For one century, we tried to erase it for the sake of aesthetics. But the plant that endured ice ages and wildfires does not bow to marketing trends. It rises again and again. It does what it has always done. It survives. This is not the story of a weed. It is the story of a plant humans once relied on completely. A plant erased not because it failed us, but because it was free. A plant that heals soil, supports pollinators, nourishes the body, and challenges the fragile systems we have built. The dandelion may matter more in the future than it ever did in the past. Knowledge like this was never lost, only buried beneath grass and forgotten habits. And like the dandelion pushing through winter ground, it returns when the world needs it most. If this vault opened something for you, subscribe to Nature Lost Vault and share this story. Every act of remembrance keeps this wisdom alive. The next vault opens soon.